This unit is about transformations, and the first thing we're going to do is learn about some of our rules. So uh, let's do some vocab. A transformation is a change in the position, shape, or size of a figure. Now we're only going to look at rigid transformations in this unit, and another name for rigid transformations are congruence transformations. And they are called that because only the position of the figure changes. The size and the shape stays the same. Now, you're going to need to know some terminology, which is a little strange. Sometimes they'll say that a transformation maps the figure onto itself. All that means is it moves the figure onto itself. So write that down. Maps means moves. All right, there are three types of rigid transformations, and you're familiar with all of them. The first one is a translation, which you know as, I'm oh, sorry, kind of going too fast there, as a slide, and that tells you to move a figure left or right and up and down. A reflection you may have heard of as a flip, and we always have a line of reflection or a line of symmetry around which or in which or over which they will use all of those terms. We will reflect something. So in this case, I've done this little half moon and I've reflected it over this line. The last rigid transformation is called a rotation and you may have heard it called a turn. And that's where you take a figure and you rotate it, usually counterclockwise. And we almost always do these in a coordinate plane. So I've shown my figure. I've taken a uh, parallelogram and I've rotated it from the first quadrant to the second quadrant. The big thing about rigid transformations is that the size and shape of the figure does not change. Only the location of the figure does. Okay, so there's some more vocabulary you're going to need to know. We use the term image, and that is the new figure that is produced after a transformation has been made. It creates an image. The pre-image is what we call the original figure before the transformation. And again, we have some notation that we're going to use for this. The new image is named with, usually anyway, is named with the same letters as the original figure, but we have these little tick marks. And we read them a special way. This particular thing says that triangle ABC is transformed. That arrow means transformed to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now sometimes they'll use other letters, but if they use the same letters, then they use these little tick marks that are read as prime. All right, some other notation that we're going to use for transformations. For translations, one of the notations that we can use is a capital T with some subscript. Now my subscripts are always going to be in brackets, but sometimes you'll see them without brackets. The important thing to note here is whatever is mentioned first is how many units that you are going to move your figure left or right. If it's a positive number, you're going to move it left. If it's a negative number, you're going to, sorry, sorry, I said that wrong. If it's a positive number, you're going to move it right. If it's a negative number, you're going to move it left. The second thing mentioned in the subscript tells you, eh, sorry, the second thing mentioned in the subscript tells you how many units to move your figure, either if it's a positive number up or if it's a ne negative number down. Normally, after they have this T notation, they will tell you what it is you are transforming, what the original pre-image is, but not always. Another kind of notation you can use is coordinate notation, and it takes an pre-image and it transforms it to either a, a right or left or up or down using x plus or minus and y plus or minus. And what's mentioned before 
sorry, I thought I had my spacing done pretty well on this, but I guess I don't. What's mentioned before, this X and Y, is your pre-image, what you're actually translating. All right, when you're talking about a reflection, the notation that you're going to use is a small r. And then there also is going to be some subscript. And again, I'm going to put mine in brackets, but that's not always in brackets. But what is in the subscript is going to be what your line of reflection is. Because when you reflect, you always reflect over or in or around a line of reflection, also called the line of symmetry then they will often tell you what it is that you are reflecting. So in this case, my pre-image is triangle ABC, and they might even tell you the name they want you to give to your image. In this case, they want us to name our image A prime, B prime, C prime. Now a rotation, the notation that you use is a capital R. And again, it has subscript, and it will be the things that will be in the subscript are the degrees of the angle of rotation and then the point or, or center of rotation. Now, if the center of rotation <clears throat> excuse me, is the origin, sometimes they will leave this out and they'll just have the angle of rotation. And again, they might have your pre-image and your image name that they want you to give, but not always. All right, so you're kind of brought up to date on the notations that we will, we will be using. There's one last thing I want you to look at, and that is a composition transformation. And that's where we have one or more transform or two or more transformations in a specific order. So it's a series of transformations performed in a specific order to create a new transformation. And we have some special notation for that. It is an open circle. So when you see an open circle, that means a composition transformation. Now, the really important thing about this is that you don't read it left to right. This particular example is read a translation after a reflection. So whatever is mentioned, sorry, that's second, you do first, just backwards from what you think it would be. And then whatever is mentioned first, you do second. And it is important what order you do these in. Now, we're not actually going to do composition transformations on Math Excel, Excel, but I will have you do those on paper, I think, in the next concept. But you may be looking at some composition transformations in this homework. So I think you have what you need to start your homework. If you have questions, make sure and get a teacher talk. Otherwise, you can just start your homework.